could tell you to follow your bliss, your desires, your desires to change the world, and exactly none of these will give you any less misery than you feel right now. Unless you have a success here and there, then maybe you'll have some spurts of happiness. But you always go back to your sorry self, no matter what. But make sure you keep asking yourself, will this make me happier? Will the next thing I do just around the corner give me more happiness? No, that's why it's around the corner, because that's where it will always be. So I know what you're thinking. You're thinking I'm going to say, live in the present moment and you will swoon with an inner joy like you have never known. Have you ever thought to yourself, yeah, I'm as much in the present moment as I was in the last one. Not to say it doesn't help. When in the Bible, Elijah prayed that God would send him thunder and lightning and maybe a lamb sandwich because I'm sure he was starving, living in a cave, and all God sent him was silence. So he could be in the present moment with his G, God. And Elijah didn't even reach down for his earbuds. <sighs> Wouldn't matter. God cut off the wireless. Lots of people can't stand silence. They get unhappy. Maybe need to smoke a blunt or something. Because it's too quiet. Then they'll get happy after the blunt, so you too can be happy avoiding silence and figuring on something else like find pleasure. After all, if you can't be happy, you can be high, even with prescription drugs, because you were told since you were a toddler do what makes you happy. Did your caregiver ever expect that you'd come home someday after you grew up to hear you say, I did what you said, Dad. Did what you said, Mom. What you said, non-binary. Oh, but that's not what parents mean when they say, do what makes you happy to their kids. Then what do they mean? They don't say, find moments of silence to reflect on what you're doing in your life that might be meaningful. They didn't say, do what gives you meaning. Or did they? And if they did tell you to find meaning, then your meaning in life could be pursued so you could be happy. You just can't get out of the endless circle where even having meaning and purpose still means you are chasing the wind for happiness. And then your caregivers set kids up so that the days inevitably come when kids compare themselves to their peers. They think their peers are happy, and when their lives don't match up with the peers, the smiley smileys, they get depressed. The opposite of happy, because they're not in the happy box with the happy smile and they aren't that peers happy uplifting personality we all want to admire even when they wear 
frozen smiles. It's depressing to see so many smiles. You should climb billboards and unleash the power of blacked out teeth on the smiley smileys. Get the smiley people away from you, like so many deer flies sucking at your very soul with smiley probes. Here's one of Satan's secrets. Make people believe they can do something to make themselves happy because that goal is pretty much unattainable. It leads to being upset, frustrated, depressed, feeling that an injustice has been done to you. All the feelings we demons love humans to have. Awful feelings like the worst one when you feel trapped and isolated. But, but you don't even need us demons to feel trapped. Your world you live in does that without us. And we are just sitting in hell, staring at each other with nothing to do. And let me tell you, some devils really stink. No jacuzzis in hell. But I digress. The real secret is something I will reveal to you now. Instead of being on a pursuit for happiness, why not a pursuit for giving to others? Not that people are going to thank you for it, but because it's the adult thing to do. After all, isn't life a progression from being children who can only think of their own needs to an adult who evolves into a being who stops with the narcissism to give to others, stops clutching their thumb, and spreads all their digits for a cause or a duty. People who wake up in the morning thinking about how they can give to others are often the people who are most satisfied with life. The people who can cook, clean, caretake, and concentrate their efforts to aid others in unfortunate circumstances and chip in for getting things done. And isn't that what charity means? The Founding Fathers, if they would have been mothers, would have said, we hereby decree that our lives are a pursuit of charity. But we demons, back in the day, gave all the power to men, because there good at violence, lust, greed, and these are the everlasting flames we love to fan. That's all you get for now. Good riddance.